Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today's topic is modernized method in locating hidden deals near you. Okay, um, so we're gonna start from the scratch, right? Because uh, everyone says deal, deal, deal. You know, I wanna get a good deal. But what does that mean? What's the definition of a great deal, right? Um, so we need to start from ground zero, okay? Uh, and then we can start, you can start in your own uh, backyard, right? In your neighborhood. But the key is to know, first of all, you need to understand the um, geographic location, right? The neighborhood, the area. Because each area will support the different um, exit strategy so in real estate we have three only uh wholesale flip or rent right um so not all markets support uh all three strategies let me give an example for instance there are some neighborhoods where the taxes are super high that pretty much uh they kill the cash flow okay so what happens in those cases the area does not support uh rentals okay but there are going to be some other areas uh where they do right um where middle class makes enough income taxes are reasonable and property prices are reasonable so those type of markets will perhaps support uh, a, a rental exit strategy so that's a step number one uh, and then i'm going to show you where to find this information whether you're own uh, zip codes or backyard will support certain strategies okay so that's step number one and then once you identified and confirm that your market supports your exit strategy then we move on to the next step and define if the property is a good deal so for that we need to understand what a good deal is okay um, now right now the thing that you need to know up front is um, what's going to be your exit strategy in real estate in 2023 okay uh, so out of the three strategies which ones are you guys considering flip rental wholesaling let me just tell you flipping right now it's really challenging it's not impossible but it's very challenging uh, because of declining prices right um, not only that, but also increased price in uh, labor and, and materials. So that makes your rehab very challenging to come under budget, okay? Because if you want to flip, you need to get three numbers right. I mean, but absolutely correct. You need to buy at the right price. That's number one. Uh, number two, you need to keep your rehab on their budget and number three you need to sell it for the expected after repair value that you came up with so right now those are very very challenging numbers to to nail you may be able to buy for the right price right but then the other two numbers right the rehab will you be able to rehab on the budget let me just give an example pre-pandemic uh, rehab uh, expenses for a three bedroom, two bath, we were able to do them between 35 to 45. Now we're hitting uh, 55 to, to 70, right? Uh, and it could go obviously higher. So we're finding that very, very challenging and extremely cosmetic uh, rehabs now are hitting uh, 20, 25, whereas before, we were doing them for 12, 15. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind, okay? Staying on their budget has become extremely, extremely challenging, okay? And now the third number is to be able to sell it for the right price, okay? Uh, lately, we've done several appraisals on multiple properties due to refinances. And we realized that, uh, and you know, talking to appraisers, I mean, they are, uh appraising properties for below what we are expecting okay um and this is just because that's what's happening in the market right properties are selling for a little bit less prices are adjusting uh 
uh, due to the current situation. High interest rates, uh, low uh, buyer pool. So these are all factors affecting uh, pricing on properties. So the question is, will you want to handle a flip right now? It's not impossible. You just need to be conservative on your numbers, okay? Uh, and also something that is very, very critical that many investors disregard uh, is market swings. What does that mean? It does make a huge difference when you buy, um, when you rehab, and when you're going to put it on the market, okay? So what does that mean? If you buy a property in the, in the summer, spring, summer, you will pay a premium, okay, uh, 10, 15%. Whereas if you were to buy it in the fall or winter, uh, you're going to be able to negotiate a better deal because you have less competition um, and only serious buyers are buying right now in the winter. And if you think about it, the best time to buy real estate is obviously when you have less competition in the winter, but not only that, is the perfect timing to start rehabbing, right? Uh, in the winter, um, early early months of uh, the new year, January, February, so that you can put the, mar the property back on the market in uh, early spring, right? Because then you're gonna be able to get better, you know, better pool of uh, potential tenants if you're gonna buy and hold or potential um, buyer pool in early spring. Uh, because think about this, if you were to buy a property in the spring, you spent all the summer rehabbing and then you put the property in the market in the fall, by then, guess what? Kids have gone back to school, families have settled, so your buyer pool all of a sudden has shrunk tremendously, right? Uh, therefore, you may see it in the prop, the property may sit for longer. So your current cost, so it's all gonna affect. That is why buying at the right market time will make a huge difference, okay? Um, so again, what strategy are you gonna focus on right now? Flipping, rental, or wholesaling? Flipping, uh, right now, we put that in the back burner unless you are uh, being very conserv conservative and you have these three numbers mailed. To rental, rentals, I think it's uh, it's the best strategy out there, okay, doing rentals, especially for the long run, because that's how you build wealth. So rentals is just the best way to, to, to build wealth. Okay, guys, <laughs> the crew came, sorry. Uh, so rentals is just a way for the long run to build wealth in real estate. Flips are gonna make a big paycheck, uh, but again, it's challenging. So rentals, the benefit is that right now the rental market is super strong. Why? Because of the same market conditions, right? People who now cannot afford to buy properties, guess what? They end up renting, so therefore, the rental market is super strong. Rents have gone through the roof in the last, uh, I would say, six to nine months. Um, now, the only challenge that you're going to face with rentals is going to be uh, financing and funding, right? Because the cost of money has gone uh, pretty high right now due to the high rates. So that's, that's going to be, I would say, the main challenge. So lenders today, they pretty much want to focus on uh, buyers who have experience if you do not have experience you will not get the most uh, favorable terms for your loan so you're going to get the higher interest rates you know somewhere in the 12 13 percent uh maybe more than two points origination and um down payment, that's gonna be huge, right? So instead of you putting 10%, 10 to 15% down, they may ask you to put 20 to 25% down. 
that's just for the bank to have their investment secure. In other words, lenders do not want to lend to people who are not experienced, right? Because obviously it's a big liability for the lender, right? If you were to default or if you were not to complete the project and perform successfully, that's a huge liability for the bank. Therefore, they're going to make you bring more money down to the, to the table. So that's the challenge with rentals right now, funding, okay? But if you manage to buy a, a property that makes sense, I mean, rentals, uh, it's just the way to go right now. I mean, uh, we were able to, to rent uh, properties fairly fast and we are able to pick and choose the best candidates. Uh, now, something to mention about rentals is Section 8 uh, has also, I would say, uh, concurrent with market values. So they have increased their payouts by 10% in 2023. So going uh, with Section 8, I think it's just a great option for all of you. Uh, in fact, we, we were able to experience rental increases from Section 8, whereas before, they could only give you a 5% increase. Uh, now they're, they're able to update the rent for existing tenants to market uh, value, which is huge, right? Uh, so we're pretty happy with Section 8. As far as Section 8 inspections, uh, they're not as strict as uh, village inspections. So that's another nice thing about Section 8. So we've been able to, to pass inspections from Section 8 first round, which is, which is awesome, right? Um, so that's for rent, the rental approach, right? So I hope you wanna stick to rentals in 2023 and wholesaling is always a great strategy for you to make quick money, okay? Obviously wholesaling is not for every, everyone because you really need to become good at uh, talking to sellers and most importantly, get them to sign a contract, okay? To become uh, successful in wholesaling, you not only need to um, be able to analyze the properties fast, like comparables, to be able to uh, analyze a deal, but also uh, give them the best solution for the seller. Some want to sell right away. Some uh, may qualify perhaps for a loan modification in case they don't want to sell. So you've got to be prepared, right, to give them op options. Some may have uh, very little equity, so they do not qualify, for instance, for a cash offer, but they may qualify for a listing, right? If they want to sell retail price, their property's in good shape, they don't have much equity, so that could be a, a great candidate for a listing agreement. Uh, some obviously might be extremely motivated and they have a lot of equity. That's the perfect wholesale deal, right? Um, which that brings me to my next point, right? So let's define what a great deal is. Um, can I ask uh, the audience, what would you define a great deal, right? When you hear that word, what does that tell you? What numbers do you need to, to focus on when, when you say a great deal? Right, because that's too generic. What's a great deal? How would you de determine a great deal? Can I start it, Igo? Yeah, of course, Sam. Uh, Thank you. It should be uh, 40 to 50% below the market value. Uh, it should be a decent location. Right. And the repair should be cosmetic not too deep okay yeah those are really great points that you mentioned uh anybody else anybody else yeah, a good deal could possibly be a, a low entry fee
No audio. If you can hear, I don't think anybody can hear you. Okay, can you guys hear me? Is the sound yeah, okay? Now we can hear. Yes, yes perfect. perfect. Not unclear. Okay, so now I'm going to give you the definition of a great deal, okay? And you don't okay. even need to have a calculator. Um, okay, so number one for sure is going to be location. Okay, make sure that uh, you're aware of uh, BC roads, very close to uh, airports, train tracks, cemeteries, uh, rivers. Uh, if there are too many border up homes nearby, that's, that's a big deal, okay? So people wanna feel safe and comfortable in the neighborhood. Uh, that's going to be number one for rentals or flips. Because if you, if your location is not the best, it's going to sit longer in the market. Uh, not only that, but you may take a price cut if the location is not right. And it could be significant, 10, 20% if the location is not ideal. Okay, so that's number one. Let's talk about number two, the numbers. We need to get to the bottom of it. So, um, the price point is going to be very, very critical. So based on our experience, the sweet spot to buy a property should be under 200,000. Okay. Under 200,000. I lost you. I can't hear you now. Okay. Better? Yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, so number one, the sweet spot to buy a property should be below 200,000. If you buy a property or find a property over 200,000, your risk starts going through the roof, okay? Why? Because you're carrying cost. Uh, I'm talking about money that you need to, to keep the property going. You're gonna be paying, uh, taxes, insurance, utilities. Um, this is gonna be really, really high. Uh, the cost of money, obviously. And uh, guess what? The buyer pool is gonna be a lot smaller. The uh, rental market is gonna be a lot smaller, okay? So that's something for you to be aware of. Uh, at this point, you want to minimize your risk. So stick to simple properties. Uh, now the question is location wise what property is going to 
cost less than 200,000? Are you gonna buy properties in uh, super distressed neighborhoods? Not necessarily. In fact, as you all know, we have uh, A, B, C, D neighborhoods. A being the best, uh, which, you know, it's gonna be very difficult to buy a property in an A neighborhood under 200,000 in today's market condition. Uh, so we're focusing primarily on B, B plus, B minus, and um, you can even get into the A minus, okay, for sure. Um, C plus, okay, so we are sort of staying away from C minus and D, the most distressed uh, neighborhoods because they like they lack infrastructure, they're not the safest, and the schools are not the best. Okay, so uh, you won't get collectible tenants and you won't be able to command top dollars for your flips in those neighborhoods. And guess what? Right now, the biggest issue that we're facing in 2023 is unemployment. Unemployment as of 2022 was 3.7%. In 2023, it's expected to go up to 4.3. That's an additional 1.2 million in job losses just in 2023 alone. And that's a huge deal because think about this, who gets laid off first, white collar or blue collar? It's not gonna be the white collar. White collar people get to work remotely, virtually from home. Blue collar uh, end up getting laid off first, okay? So they happen to live in the perhaps uh, D, C, B neighborhoods, okay? Actually B neighborhoods, they tend to be hybrid, remote and then in office. So the better the neighborhood, the safer your investment, right? So that is why in 2023, uh, we're gonna totally stay away from C minus and below, meaning distressed neighborhoods. We wanna focus on better neighborhoods. Uh, ideally, stay within the B neighborhoods, okay? Uh, if you can get into the A neighborhood, it's not gonna be a single family home. It's gonna need to be a, an attached home, meaning condo, duplex, or townhouse, okay, for an A minus neighborhood, because the price range for a single family home in an A neighborhood is gonna go in the upper 200,000, low 300,000, and that property will still need a lot of work, okay? Um, so just be aware of that. Like for instance, I can mention uh, a listing, right, that uh, Sam has in an A neighborhood, right um that he's been struggling to to sell it's gonna be sort of like a flip but it's just a huge challenge the property was bought in the upper 200,000 and uh it's gonna be sold in the low 300,000 as is right but i think uh investor may end up not not recuperating all the investment perhaps a loss right so that's the biggest problem when you go into very expensive properties, your risk goes through the roof. And guess what? In the meantime, you're bleeding cash in uh, carrying costs like taxes, insurance, and utilities, right? So, and your buyer pool is way smaller. So that's something to be aware of. Whereas if you stay below 200,000, everything is, I would say, less expensive, starting with your carrying cost. Uh, and then, uh, the uh, ability to get funding for properties in this price range is gonna be easier, especially if you tap into private funding, right? Because then it's a lesser investment, less risk for a, a lender who's gonna give you a private money lender, right? Whereas if you were to, with Harmony lenders, it's not a big deal whether it's below or, or above 200,000 because they have all the money of the world. Uh, but I'm talking about or referring to private money lenders. So ideally, you keep your options open for funding. You want to be able to tap into private money lenders and harmony lenders. Private money lenders do not feel comfortable uh, giving you a loan for over 200000 okay? Because they know the risk is going to go through the roof. So staying below 200000 is just the sweet spot to maximize your return, whether it's a flip or a rental. And not only that, but we've proved several times, dozen times, that uh, the cash flow is gonna work way better 
when you focus on properties where all in investment stays uh, in the mid one, uh, 100s, close to the 200, okay? So now, uh, having said that, let's dive into the numbers. What is it that you, you need to look for? Uh, it's super simple. Let me give you a rule of thumb. When, first of all, I'm gonna keep this 200,000 uh, rule of thumb in mind. And the next step that I need to uh, look into is what's gonna be the purchase price of the property? And that's easy, right? Because you know that. Uh, so let's assume the property is going to is going to they're going to accept an offer for 130,000 as an example. It meets my criteria, right? The purchase price is below 200,000. So now the next question is, what should the property appraise for once I fix it up? So if I buy it for 130,000, it's super simple. You need to add at least a hundred thousand to it. So the ARV or after repair value on that property should be no less than 230,000. Okay, so that's rule of thumb number one. From the purchase price plus 100K, that should be your ARV. Okay. Um, so if you buy it for a hundred, that property better appraised for at least two hundred thousand. Okay. Now the second question is the scope of work or the rehab. How much will my rehab be? So that's number one. Number two, the rehab. Okay, the rehab uh, needs to be below sixty-five thousand dollars. Okay, before below $65,000. Okay, um, now how are you going to possibly know how much the rehab is going to be based on pictures? If you look at pictures, uh, this is what you need to focus on. First of all, you're going to look at the exterior pictures. Okay, you want to get a good feeling for what you see on the outside, the roof. You're going to focus on the big ticket items the roof, the windows, uh, garage, driveway, and exterior, if it's siding, especially if it's siding, right? If it's brick, uh, there's not much you can do on, on it except for top pointing, right? So exterior, because guess what? A lot of investors oversee exterior uh, expenses. And guess what? That could amount to at least, based on experience, 15,000 on the outside. Five to fifteen thousand. If if it needs a lot of work, uh, I mean, just think about it. A new roof or just a, a new layer on the roof is going to be anywhere between three, four thousand, all the way to ten thousand, just on the roof. Windows, it could be anywhere between four to six, seven thousand, depending on how many windows. So exterior makes a big difference, okay, uh, on your rehab. So the way we easily compute the rehab is we take the square footage okay and multiply it times forty dollars okay so the property i'm gonna put forty dollars for uh square feet uh, but before before i give you that uh, so let's assume the property has a three bedroom two bath 1500 square feet multiply that times 40 okay that's sixty thousand. And that's considering that you're going to need to do some sort of exterior work as well. So take the square footage times 40. Uh, before, we used to multiply the square footage times 30, even 25, but not anymore. At least $40. Um, so let's go inside the property. On the outside, we already went over that. Now, on the inside, the, the only two things that you need to focus on first, kitchen and baths. Do you need to redo the kitchen and the bath? Over 95% of the properties, I would say over 97% of the properties that you find off market or even on the MLS for a great deal, you're gonna need to redo the kitchen and bath. And uh, that's where you actually really need to put the money because you're gonna recoup your investment and double your money if you put money in kitchens and baths. And that's what, that's, 
Uh, I would say what really sells properties, right? If you have a really nice kitchen and bath, uh, because, you know, women tend to be the decision makers and uh, they love kitchens, right? So having a great kitchen and bath is going to uh, is going to be totally worth it. So if you have to do kitchen and bath, guess what? Uh, that's by default a medium rehab. Sam mentioned earlier that you need to focus on cosmetic rehabs. That's that's absolutely true. But out of 100 properties, only three or less are going to be cosmetic in the off-market world. Most of the distressed off-market properties are going to be medium to go rehabs. Okay. So medium, medium rehab means that you're going to need to do for sure new kitchen or redo the kitchen, uh, bathrooms, and then flooring. Some light fixtures, uh, some light electric, light plumbing, perhaps some light HVAC. Okay, that's a medium rehab that you're going to easily hit uh, 50 to 65,000 on a house that is anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. Okay, keep that in mind. Over 97% of the properties, your rehab is going to be hitting anywhere between fifty to $65,000. Uh, light rehab, cosmetic, that means that you're not redoing the kitchen or bathroom. Perhaps you're uh, painting the kitchen cabinets, changing the hardware, uh, maybe changing a vanity or putting a mirror, changing the light fixtures. That's a very cosmetic and also painting the entire house. Uh, and perhaps few repairs here and there. That's a cosmetic. And a cosmetic, the minute you open up a house to do a cosmetic, you're hitting uh, 12, 15,000, up to 20,000, believe it or not. Just painting alone, painting a house is going to cost you between labor and material uh, 4,500 average. Okay. And then by the time. It, it's uh, more than that. Yeah. How much uh, w would you say? I just got an estimate on a two-story in Palatine, um, and we're looking at uh, our, that's our property up there, and it's uh, all the two stories. I was going to get it sided, and the guy came out to look at it and said it would be a sin to side this building. He said, but he says we can paint it and we can do the repairs on it, uh, $6,800. How many square feet? Uh, there's uh, a property one there. is all of 2100 square feet okay 2100 no square feet okay uh i actually i believe that's a great quote for two reasons number one the minute um you buy properties over 200,000 square feet i mean those are like big houses uh over three four bedroom how many bedrooms do you have in that house that that's pretty big oh that's a four bedroom two bath full basement yeah, absolutely. Once you go over 2,000, boom, you rehab. Uh, it's going to go through the roof. So I believe that's a great quote, especially if it, if the walls need patching and repairs, because contractors are going to look at two things, obviously the square footage, but also the neighborhood. If you're in an A neighborhood like Palatine, they will tend to upcharge, uh, right? Because you're in a better neighborhood. It's a better quality property. Uh, so that quote, I, I truly like it, to tell the truth, uh, for over 2,000 square feet. Are they also painting the basement? No, no, no. They're just, all they're doing is the exterior. Oh, just exterior. Just the exterior, because you were, you were discussing uh, exterior paint jobs around 4,500, and that's conservative. Uh, oh, I was thinking uh, the inside. I was no, I was no, no, referring to the inside. Directly the exterior siding. The I had them come out. I thought I was going to wind up just reciting it, and they 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 said, you know, I would love to do that, but you know, the, the type of siding that's on here is they can't. You can't even remanufacture it. It's awesome stuff. He said, just fix it and paint it. Okay. And that was his bid. Okay. Okay, so no, I was referring to the inside paint job. So for for that is why 6,800 for a 2,000 square feet. The inside, uh, it's very reasonable. Oh, yeah. no, you're, you're right about your numbers, and if you're talking interior, 45, 4,600 dollars is accurate. Yes. Uh, now on the outside reach, so you have two options. If you have siding, uh, you have the option to tear tear out the existing and put new one that is super expensive. 
but the best way is to put new siding on top of the existing siding. Um, Absolutely, I agree with that. It just depending uh, it on just the condition. On, yeah, it just depends on the condition. And this guy was straight with me. He said, uh, "You know, you've got some, the siding on here is old. It doesn't look good, but I'm telling you, this is this stuff is the best." He, he, he goes, and then he walked me over to my neighbors and looked around the corner, and he says, "Your neighbor's got the same siding," and I I didn't look ever look that close. And it is. It's the same era. Anyway, I don't want to go on and on and bust up your meeting. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, that's that's a great point. So, yeah, so rehabbing, uh, we're referring, right? Medium rehabs, um, you're going to need to redo kitchen and baths and then paint. So how much will it cost to rehab a kitchen? Kitchen cabinets, you're going to let's start with the kitchen cabinets. It's going to be a few thousand, anywhere between 25 all the way to 3,500 just for the kitchen cabinets. And then you also need the tile, right? For the backsplash, the flooring, um, and then all the light fixtures, the uh, plumbing fixtures. So just the materials you're gonna, sp uh, including paint, you're gonna spend close to six, 7,000 plus the labor. You're looking at uh, 10 to 12,000 for a brand new kitchen. Uh, now for the bathroom, you're looking at six to seven thousand just for labor. Cheap labor just on a brand new bathroom is going to be anywhere between thirty-five. Uh, that's thirty-five is cheap. Four thousand, I would say, is more reasonable. Four thousand for labor to just gut the entire bathroom and do a new one just for labor. Materials it depends where you where you buy, but you're looking uh, anywhere between six to seven thousand per bathroom. I'm, I'm talking about full bathrooms, okay? So just kitchen and bathroom alone, uh, you will easily hit uh, 18, 20,000, okay? At least uh, being really, really conservative, 15 to 18,000, kitchen and bathroom. Plus, if you end up doing flooring, flooring, you're gonna spend five, six, 7,000 between labor and material. Hopefully you have hardwood floors that you just need to refinish. And then uh, you always encounter plumbing and electric, right? So depending on the villages, some villages have pre-sale inspections. So you might need to fix all the violations first, right? Um, so keep that in mind, right? Because a big plumbing job can cost you anywhere between 10 to 15. And the same for electric, 10 to 15, if you need to like redo the electric or redo the plumbing. HVAC, uh, it could you know be five to six thousand if you replace water heater, furnace, without any dock work. Okay, if you start put, going into new dock work, then you're gonna hit ten thousand, ten, twelve thousand. So any new system that you redo, you will hit ten to twelve thousand dollars, or ten to fifteen, I, I should say. So just be aware of uh, the rehab expense. So again, let's go back to the numbers. Um, a great deal is going to be your purchase price, and you need to add a hundred thousand. If you are if you are buying a property below two hundred thousand, um, that should be your ARV. So we were talking one thirty plus a hundred thousand. My property better price for two thirty, um, and then the rehab should be below sixty five thousand. Now, why does this formula work really well? Because uh, if you're going to, let's say, do a rental, uh, what that means is that once you fix up the property using a harmony lender or a private money lender, uh, you need to refinance, right? And put it into a longer term because most likely you've got a rehab loan. Uh, it's a short term loan uh, that, you know, that allows you to purchase and rehab the property, but then you need to refinance. And when you refinance, the lender will want you to have 25% uh, equity. What that means is that out of the 230,000, they will only give you a loan for 75% of the ARV. So 230 times 75% is 172,000. So think about this. If you bought this property for 130, that only gives you 42,000 for the rehab, right? So if you go over that amount, that means that you're gonna have money stuck in the property, okay? 
uh, and we discussed, right? The rehab should hit 65. So if the rehab is 65,000, guess what? You're gonna have at least 20,000 stock in the property uh, just for the rehab and obviously uh, some money for closing expenses. So you're looking at 30 to 35,000 at least to have stock into this deal. It is that important that you need to focus on the numbers, right? So remember, you always need to have that 25% equity. So this is how we compute it. When we look at the purchase price, uh, so let's assume 130, and then we, we feel that the rehab is gonna be 65,000. So it's 130 plus 65, we're at 195. So all in is 195K. So we're gonna request a loan from the bank for 195,000. Obviously, they're gonna, they want us to put at least 10% down. So we're looking at bringing to closing 20 to 25,000, 20 more, more likely like 25,000 with the closing expenses, okay? So now the question is, how much should this property appraise for? So it is super simple. Let me, let me give you the rule of thumb. Uh, so 195 or the all-in investment, purchase and rehab is, should be 75% of your ARV. So the question is, what's your ARV? And to compute that, you're gonna multiply the 195 times 100, and you're gonna divide that by 75%. And that's gonna give you what your ARV should be. So this property should appraise for 260,000. So does that make sense? So think about it, you bought it for 130, but you need to put 65,000, so the property should appraise for 260. So what you need to look at is comps. Before you get in on the contract, make sure that the comps are somewhere in the 250, 260, 270 range. And then you will have zero money stuck in the property because the bank, when you refinance, they're gonna say, okay, your property appraised for 260, the most we can give you, and then I'm gonna multiply this times 75, times 75. So the most we can give you is 195. And guess what? It happens to be your all-in investment, purchase and rehab. So that's the formula for a great deal. You need to have 25% uh, equity in the back end because that's how much equity the bank wants you to have in the property, okay? And obviously the lender is going to, when you refinance, they're also gonna look into the rent, right? They want you to meet a ratio that is called debt coverage ratio of 1.2. What that means is they want you to make sure that your rent is gonna pay for uh, all the operating expenses, the debt service, meaning the mortgage and the uh, principal and interest. Uh, your operating expenses are gonna be insurance taxes and any utilities that you end up paying on that property. And on top of it, you need to have a surplus cash flow of at least 20%. So if all your expenses are, let's say $800, they want you to collect $1,000 in rent, okay? So when you uh, refinance the properties, most lenders will ask you for a lease. They wanna know how much you, you are renting the property for. And the good news is that right now, uh, the rents are extremely high. So your debt coverage ratio most likely is just gonna work amazing uh, because the rent's been so so high. And please, talking about rents, don't be shy to increase your rents to bring, in, to bring them up to market value, okay? Don't be shy. If you're gonna uh, put a property for rent, don't be shy to ask for what the market rents are because you will get it, okay? And I'm telling you because we've done that. Like we took over some properties or bought some properties uh, and the tenant was paying 1450, we said the new rent is gonna be 2000. Take it or leave it. And they ended up taking it because if they move out, they're gonna face the same problem, right? They're gonna be paying 2000 or over 2000. So uh, they better not move and stay and just pay more. Okay, so don't be shy. Even Section 8 was able to approve. I was blown out of my mind. 
uh, they approved a, a rent increase of $400 per month. I just couldn't believe it. Whereas before, they would only allow us to increase the rent by 5% on a yearly basis. At that point, I didn't like Section 8 that much because of that reason. Once you are with them, you're stuck with a very low rent increase, whereas today they're able to match market rent. So again, increase the rents uh, and Section 8 is supporting that. Um, so going back to deal, what's a great deal? A great deal is a property that you buy uh, under all in purchase and rehab below 200,000, okay, in a B neighborhood. That's a great deal. And that your ARV is going to be, um, your ARV is going to be at least 100,000 on top of your purchase price. Your rehab should be less than 65,000. And uh, the formula that I gave you, you need to have your ARV uh, be um, or have 25% equity, meaning that 75% of the ARV should be your all-in investment. So again, 75% of my all-in investment is 195 and the ARV is 260,000, okay? And a property that is worth 260,000, uh, it's gonna be in a B minus B plus neighborhood, okay? Uh, properties whose ARV is over 300,000, you are hitting a minus neighborhoods, okay? Any property over 300,000 ARV, you're hitting the A minus, A plus neighborhood, okay? So don't be afraid to look into the A minus neighborhoods. A plus neighborhoods, uh, you know, based on my experience are out of the scope <laughs> because they're way too expensive. The numbers do not make sense when you rent them because taxes are too high your carrying cost is too high, so you do not meet the debt coverage ratio that the bank or the lender requires you to have. That's one problem um, with A plus neighborhoods. So we're always uh, ruling those out. You know, properties over all in expense is over three hundred thousand. We we just cannot make the numbers work, and the risk is too high. So we like to focus on the lesser. Uh, but the least expensive, the, the less expensive properties, I, I should say. So again, num, uh, let's quickly recap. Number one is location, okay? Nowhere near busy streets, uh, cemeteries, train tracks, airports, rivers, uh, highways, uh, close to border of houses, okay? And then number two, uh, making sure that you know, the neighborhood supports your exit strategy, whether you're gonna do flips, rentals, wholesales, um, you know, you can do wholesales across the board on any neighborhood, okay? There are buyers just for any neighborhood. And then number three, a great deal, it's all about numbers, okay? It's a math problem, that's it. So a great deal, again, remember, after you met the location uh, criteria, it's all about numbers. Your all-in expense for purchase and rehab should be 75% of your ARB. So make sure that you have your comps uh, available. So the way we can help you is we can do CMAs on your behalf. Our back-end uh, analysts can, can run CMAs uh, for you uh, to give you the comps, right? So at least you have that number. As far as your role, you already know the purchase price. What about the scope of work? Again, take the $40 per square foot rule of thumb. Take the square footage times 40, and that should give you a really good ballpark idea of what your rehab is going to be, assuming that it's a medium rehab, which over 97% of the properties are going to require a new kitchen and a new bathroom from the off-market um, space, right? If it's MLS um, for, for a good price, again, you might, it might be medium rehab. Um, only a very slim percentage will be cosmetic, okay? You, you will hardly see those come your way. Uh, they typically don't even make it out to the, to the world, okay? The cosmetic, the amazing deals, you may not even see them, okay? Um, 
So does that make sense? Do you guys uh, fully understand what you need to look at for identifying great deals? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So that's step number one. So now step number two, where do you find those deals? Uh, we have uh, off-market properties uh, that we need to focus on, and those are pre-foreclosures, probates, upcoming auctions, uh, vacant properties. So if you still don't have access to Chicago Deal Vault, which by the way, we're revamping right as we speak, uh, let us know. We can give you free access for 30 days. Send us an email to support at chicagodealable.com. We can give you free access for at least 30 days. Uh, and in there, uh, we have the off-market properties, but at least, and, and the cool thing about that is that you can filter them by equity. So we already know uh, the outstanding loan amount and how much equity the owner has. So always, you know, we like to target high equity properties, over 50% equity, uh, because then the next thing that we need to have is motivation from the seller to sell it. Right, and then if you have those two components, you you got a great deal. So again, um, off-market properties will have the biggest spread, but we never ignore MLS. Okay, we've gotten really great deals from the MLS. Um, so what we do is uh, we scan all seven counties MLS, and right now um, we have increased the purchase price on MLS properties to, we used to have it a max purchase price of 225. We've gone as high as 325 purchase price, okay? Uh, because we need to focus on better neighborhoods, better mark, uh, better properties, um, better neighborhoods, better properties. So again, uh, that's amen. just the purchasing criteria. Go ahead. I said amen to that. Yeah, right. So, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're going to be flagging uh, properties in better neighborhoods, but obviously the, the price point is going to be a little bit higher. But always please keep this in mind. The higher the price, the higher the risk. But right now in these market conditions, you've got to focus on the better neighborhoods because you're going to have, you know, white collar um, tenants or prospective buyers. Right, they're gonna be collectible tenants. They pay rent on time because they happen to work virtually, remotely. Uh, they're not suffering layoffs, and uh, they can pay top dollars, right? Because they're they're not gonna be FHA buyers, right? FHA, you know, you have to go through a lot of requirements through FHA, so it's a little bit more challenging. But those happen to be in the C minus, C plus neighborhoods some in the B minus, but B minus, B plus, you're going to get conventional buyers or retail buyers that qualify for conventional lenders uh, or funding. That means they're putting down 20% down. So it's going to be easier, right, overall. And then um, they'll, they'll be able to pay higher rents. So again, we can give you uh, access to Chicago Deal Vault for, for that. And then uh, coming up, we have a meeting at 7.30 um, and we're going to be talking, we focus on funding, okay? So email support if you need access to that meeting uh, so that you can, you can join. So I'm going to put the support email. It's support at chicagobillvault.com. Uh, to get access to that meeting. And, on, uh, and then I also want to mention that we're going to have a conference uh, in about a month from today. It's going to be in downtown Chicago. And let me show you or send you the invite for the conference. It's going to be uh, March 18th, which is a Saturday. We're going to bring food, the sponsors. It's going to be a really great event. And the objective of this uh, conference is to give you all the strategies and information that you need to be successful in 2023 in one single event, right? Instead of piecing everything together in multiple webinars, I want to make sure that you have it all ready and strategized for 2023 in one go. Obviously, we're going to give you information in not one or two hours. It might take three hours or so. So it's going to be a great networking event. 
please make sure that you RSVP is completely free. We're going to have refreshments. We're going to have food. It's going to be a great uh, opportunity for you to meet uh, like-minded investors, uh, sponsors, uh, partners of ours. We're inviting lenders, attorneys, uh, you name it. So it's going to be a really great event. Please make sure that you RSVP uh, and join us in person. We're also going to do it virtually for those of you who cannot attend so that you can at least get the information, but nothing beats face to face. Okay. Uh, it's going to be downtown. Uh, the address is on the invite. It's uh, 1000 North Milwaukee suite 100. Okay. So it's really close to downtown, like less than five minutes away from downtown. Uh, so we're super excited for you to join uh, this conference. And please uh, send us an email if you need access to Chicago Deal Vault and for the upcoming meeting uh, at 7.30, okay? And then we are also uh, starting a new wholesaling uh, program with Russell where we talk about the nuts and bolts wholesaling. So if you're thinking about wholesaling, make sure that you send us an email and we'll have you join Friday, 4 p.m., okay? And in fact, I'm going to be flying to Orlando to meet with Russell this weekend, okay? Uh, we're making uh, some enhancements to the platform we have. So sometimes face-to-face uh, -face is just the best way to, to accomplish that, okay? So again, please join uh, our next meeting at 7.30. And if you're not able to, Friday, if you're considering wholesaling at 4 p.m., okay? Send us an email to support and uh, RSVP to uh, the real estate conference of uh, March 18th, Saturday. So thank you everyone for joining. I look forward to seeing you uh, in our next meeting or for sure on Friday. So thanks a lot and uh, have a wonderful evening.